were wrong most of the time, but most I feel like we were both almost. In a we, way, got it all. We, we got it. We got it almost. Right. Yes, I know. Very disappointing that my boy Jordan didn't uh, make it three out of four of the, of the slam uh, quest, but uh, entertaining stuff and you know watching it on Saturday with the winds and, and people trying to putt and the ball moving on the green was. That was good theater. Uh, that was entertaining stuff, to say the least. And, uh, you know, uh, made for what was normally an uneventful Monday, made for something to do on a Monday afternoon. It was, was kind of fun. Yeah, it was Except for cool. the fact that the most boring guy in golf won. Won, yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. I agree with you there. But I think that, I mean, you were right that it didn't cost Spieth a chance to contend, but I was right, right that he couldn't win it after doing it. Right. And uh, I was almost right that Louis won. But Louis, yep, yeah, who probably he should have should have he could have made a couple putts. Just make a putt, man. Yeah, I agree. Well, we'll we'll talk a little more golf, and we'll talk some Tom Clawbutter situation over there on the west yep. side. New basketball coach over at Parker, and a uh, little Brewers, 16 of their last 22. Is it time Bust to... Bust him up. Time to Bust get back up. on that wagon? Uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll about, talk about it. I got one it. leg on. One leg on, one, <laughs> one leg off. <laughs> well, well, we'll take that interesting note into the show here. Uh, join us for all that and more coming up on Extra Points. What's up, everybody? Welcome back. It's Extra Points. Uh... After taking a couple of weeks off, I got out of town, got a little R and R in. See ya. <laughs> and uh, lo and behold, of course, as soon as I leave, all all hell breaks loose. All hell loose. breaks but, loose. Yeah. Uh, uh, this is extra points where we talk about local state sports and anything that's on our mind here. This is uh, John Barry, sports writer here at the Gazette. I'm Eric Schmolt, and uh, let's just get right into it. While I'm gone, it was like the first morning after I left. I think I woke up to a bunch of phone calls because. Uh, Parker was getting ready to announce that Tom Clawbutter was uh, out as the girls' basketball coach, and Jenna Hartwig was in. Uh, you were here to curtail and wrangle all that the news that you could, which right. wasn't much because wasn't nobody lot, wanted to no. say a whole lot. Nope. But uh, why don't you just kind of give us an update on how it all shook out and where things stand now? Well, I mean, uh, let's face it. He is the most successful coach in the history of Janesville High School sports. Um, three state titles. Uh, fifth winning as coach in state history for girls basketball and uh, was not allowed or afforded or whoever you want to put it the opportunity to get his job back and as a teacher that resigned at the end of the last calendar year uh, to reapply for any kind of a any kind of a coaching position you have to wait 75 days according to the Wisconsin retirement systems uh, bylaws and before Tom had the chance to do that which would have been August 25th Uh, The Jangel School District, uh, whomever may have been that made the final decision, evidently there was a committee, Uh, they decided to go with Jenna Hartwig, uh, former player under Tom and a former assistant coach, uh, to fill that position. And um, I think for those who are a little bit uh, confused by the whole process, uh, you can include me in that mix because I'm not even sure yet exactly how it went down, why it went down. Um, I think my biggest take from the whole thing is the fact that in the press release, which was released on Friday at about 4 o'clock, which was a convenient time because we weren't able to get really a hold of anybody, uh, my biggest complaint is that Tom's not mentioned in the press release. And somebody that's done all that he's done for uh, for that school and for that program, and let's face it, you know, he put Janesville Parker on the map, um, he wasn't even mentioned. Uh, not even a thank you or uh, anything like that. It was just... We'd like to welcome Jenna Hartwig as our newest coach, um, you know, blah, blah, blah. And no discredit to Jenna because I think it's a great hire. I think Jenna will do an outstanding job, and she certainly learned from the best. Um, but uh, I just think the whole way it was handled uh, reflects poorly on the on the uh, Jangel School District. It's not. It wasn't necessarily a shock because, I mean, we had started hearing rumblings as far back as January or February, right. when we when we had kind of gotten wind that Tom was going to re- retire from teaching, and even he, even then he didn't know exactly how it was all going to go down. It didn't seem like right, um, but I think just the surprise was nobody explaining how they got to this point or why they haven't why they didn't afford him uh, a chance to reapply. I mean, I guess if we look back at a couple other recent. Bob Suter was the one from Craig that right, uh, and I don't know if the and the time frame was different. That was a thirty day waiting list. This was a seventy five, which again that had nothing to do. That was just uh, 
part of the bylaws that the Wisconsin uh, retirement system set up. But I would assume in both cases, I mean, if you, I mean, they, they knew that Coach Suter back then wanted to reapply. They probably didn't, I would assume they didn't even really open it up, or did they? Do you well, know? Well, I think remember? the biggest misnomer that people have right now is that Tom didn't apply for the job. And that's not true. Tom couldn't apply. And whether the school district said, you know, I think a couple, one of the answers that we got from from Stephen Sperry, who was the human resources director, was, you know, I don't know if Tom wanted to apply or not. Um, well, what does it matter? He couldn't apply, you know. So if I come into your office as Tom Clawett and I say, look, uh, that job, you know, I know I got to wait 75 days. I'm interested in applying for it because he told me, you know, if it would have gotten to that point, he would have reapplied for the job. But uh, I think a lot of people are under the assumption that he didn't apply, and that's not true. He couldn't apply, so therefore he didn't apply. <laughs> and uh, uh, there were 15 candidates. Three of them got interviews, and I think I think once they sorted through the candidates, it was fairly obvious that Jenna was the best uh, the best choice. And like I say, no no disrespect at all to Jenna because she uh, she's paid her dues. She knows the game very well. Um, she worked under Tom for six years. She played at Wisconsin. Um, you know, she's, she's had those girls in the summertime. So I'm not, I don't have a problem with the hire. I'm just, I have a problem with the way the whole thing was handled. Well, the unfortunate thing is we don't know what this committee or Sperry or Lau, you know, Principal Lau or Joe Dye, the athletic, athletic director, director Joe Dye. Yeah. I mean, we're thinking cause none of them have really, at least to They're, my, they've all kind of passed the buck and, and it, and it doesn't matter who you talk to right now. If, if you talk to one, they'll say, well, you, I refer to this person and, and so on. And Karen Schulte, who ultimately is the superintendent of the school district was in China. So, um, you know, it, it's not like we didn't get answers to questions we asked. We just didn't get anything in depth and we didn't get anything that really solved any answers or any questions that we had. And I mean, we got the basic answers, which was how many applied, who was on the committee, um, you know, what the process involved, but we didn't get any answers as to why Tom wasn't allowed to, to reapply, why they didn't wait until at least August 25th to, to hire a new coach. Uh, another misnomer is that uh, they were worried about between administration and players that uh, contact with the kids in the summer. Well, that's not true. Kevin Porter, the athletic director at La Follette, has those kids this summer. They're playing in a sweat league over in Milwaukee. They're is the same league they've always they've played always in. played in. So coaching wasn't a problem in the summer. So I I don't know why they you know they brought that onto the table as well. But um, I'm hoping to get a chance to sit down with Coach Claw in the next week, get his side of the story, and really more than anything reflect on what again was an incredible career that uh, to me just was short sighted with this rash you know rush of a of naming a new coach. And we'll. I mean, we'll continue to ask the questions. We will. We'll see if any of them ever get if answered. If we ever get any answers, yep. Uh, just kind of a weird situation. It is. It's just an uh, it's just an odd way for, like I say, the the most storied coach in city history to go out is to me is just it looks bad on the district. Um, on the baseball side of things, the Brewers, the Brewers, the crew. Um, Sellers, no more. I don't know. They, they're sixteen and six, I think, in their last twenty-two games. What do you do? I mean, they could be eighteen and four. They should have swept the Dodgers before the All Star break. They gave those two games away. But um, you know, and, and you're like me. You're on Twitter a lot, and and we're checking various websites. And I still think a couple of their a couple of their cards are going to be dealt. Uh, whether it's Para. Ramirez, K Rod. Um, I read something yesterday that Toronto's really hot on Mike Fires. Uh, he's not as young as people think. Fires is 31, so it's not like he's in the prime of his career. But I got to believe that uh, just because their farm system is so depleted, that they're going to make some moves. Um, and certainly, you know, if it's a wholesale with Gomez and Lind and K Rod and and Segura and Ramirez, you know that's one thing. But if it's just a couple of pieces, where you hope maybe there's an outside chance you can still make a run at the wild card, they do have a favorable schedule. They have a lot of home games in August. Uh, I think eighteen or nineteen of their games in August are at Miller Park. So um, you I think know. I think if anything, it just shows uh, the team seems to be buying into what Craig Council has brought right. in there uh, as the new manager. Uh, they're they're playing for him at least and. I think you still, like you said, you still have to move some of those pieces. I think yep. Para for sure, he's been playing lights out. There's just no room. They have four outfielders right now on a team that <laughs> doesn't need And they may trade Loesch and Garza for you and I. I mean, that would probably be, a, about, fair, it'd that, be a fair deal. That's about what they'd get for him, I, I think. I mean, if you think about it, with, with Youngman th- 
throwing so well right now, and you take Peralta coming back, Fires and Nelson, you know, there's four guys right there where, you know, Garza's coming back. We're taping on Tuesday. He's coming back against Cleveland tonight, but I have no faith in him. No. And uh, if somebody will take Loach in his contract, so be it, and go with the four young kids, uh, you know, bring up a fifth starter, whomever that may be, and, and kind of ride it out from there. But, uh, you know, I don't think Braun, I don't think LaCroix, um, you know, Scooter, those guys, Chris Davis, I don't think they're going anywhere, and uh, we'll see what happens. Gomez? I mean, what what would you think about that? I well, mean, he's I, been... I, I know Terry Ryan in Minnesota, uh, the Janesville native, is very interested in getting him back. Um, the Twins, certainly in the midst of a wild card right now, they're six games back of the Royals and uh, playing really well under Molitor, and I know Terry right now, they've got a hole in the outfield. Um, Torrey Hunter's 40 years old. This is his last year. So, you know, Terry, again, I, I don't know enough about the Twins' farm system, but if the Brewers could get a couple of arms that maybe the Twins have at, you know, double A or triple A or something and, and kind of build for the future, you know, Gomez certainly – I would think Gomez, Segura, and Parra are the three right now that uh, are probably the most coveted. And then certainly K-Rod, 21 for 21 on saves. But he's still he, – he's still, you know – He's a puzzle every time he comes out there. It seems to walk a guy, hit a guy, or give up a hit. And doesn't really matter if you get the job done, does yeah, it? Yeah, exactly, and that's just it. If you, if you can put up with that helter-skelter part of him, uh, you know, you've know, you got yourself a pretty serviceable closer, but I don't know. Um, you know, I think somebody will take a chance on him, and there's certainly teams out there that, that need relief. I know with Gomez, uh, a lot of Brewers fans have really just kind of really grew to love him. Yeah. Uh, I'm not really one of them, so it doesn't <laughs> affect me. I, I've, I never saw him swing out of his shoes and lose a helmet with his knees, you know, screwing yep. into the ground on one on like a one zero pitch. Then I never again. Well, I'd probably be okay with that. Well, even the other day on on the play that knocked Mercer out for six weeks, everyone said, "Oh, it was a baseball play." He slid, but he was nowhere near second base when he slid. Why didn't he just go down and let him tag him? And I mean, he slid ten feet from the bag and. And, you know, I haven't heard a lot of people say it was dirty or anything like that, but to me it's just you can say it's instincts that made him slide, but, I mean, he was nowhere near second base. I mean, it would be like sliding, you know, on a steel and coming up 10 feet short. I mean, yeah. that's, if we if he didn't slide, we'd probably be sitting here saying he didn't do anything. He didn't do it good, but, I mean, could he could he have, like, barreled into him? Could he have? Yeah, I don't think that's. I don't know. I mean, I don't know enough about it. It just seems like it was a a very poor decision to slide that far from the bag and certainly the pirates now with with mercer out and harrison out you know the left side of their infield could be lost for an extended period of time maybe they could use a ramos there, he could go, there you go he we'll could go back, go back to back pittsburgh home. where he started yeah <laughs> uh high school baseball players here and some others playing this yeah weekend. a big weekend for Janesville, and that's something i want to touch on for you viewers out there uh Janesville's, uh youth baseball program which has been just um, a great part of the city's rich history and, and success, uh, hosting their first ever Ohio Valley Regional for 13-year-olds uh, out at the U Sports Complex. Gets underway on Thursday, opening ceremonies at 5. Some uh, local dignitaries are going to throw out the first pitch. Um, pretty neat stuff. And uh, in talking to Aaron Ellis, the uh, baseball president, uh, it's a big deal for the city. Uh, all four of the major hotels in town are booked through the weekend. Uh, you know, restaurants, gas stations, the mall, you know, convenience stores are going to be busy because uh, there's a lot of, there's 12 teams from seven states coming in and uh, pool play begins on Thursday, uh, Thursday and Friday. Then they break into a single elimination tournament on Saturday. Uh, Janesville, as the host team, qualifies automatically. But Tom Davey, uh, another longtime area coach, uh, is taking a pretty good team. So it, it's not just because they got in as a host team. Janesville's going to put a pretty good product on the field. And uh, for those of you that are looking for something to do this weekend, uh, get out to the youth sports complex and just see some very good young baseball talent. When will that go through? When is the championship? Uh, the championship technology? game, I believe, is on Tuesday. Okay. So, so it's uh, it goes into single elimination, single elimination bracket on Saturday. Uh, so each team in the tournament is guaranteed at least four games with pool play. And then also uh, the Jane's Legion team, which has played better of late, uh, struggled early, but I think they finished 19 and 10. They're hosting the regional on Thursday as well, a four-team double elimination tournament with Beloit, who was kind of their nemesis all season, lost to them four times. But um, Genoa City, they Genoa opened, City, right? they were two and two with. But who was the other team? Lake Geneva. Lake Geneva, and and understand. I don't know how strong they are. Bob thinks they're kind of maybe the the weak link of the tournament. But uh, Janesville opens with Genoa City, eight o'clock Thursday night down at Riverside, and. Uh, 
Hunter Van Zant will pitch, and he did not throw against Genoa City at all this year. So uh, Bob Shank, the coach, is is going with uh, Hunter Van Zant, Alex Morrow, and Logan Coulter as his three pitchers, and he, he was happy to be set up going into the weekend. But again, they're gonna probably gonna have to beat Beloit, and they haven't been able to do that this year yet. And you said three other youth teams. Three are other youth teams are uh, our state state champion ten year old team. Uh, they're playing in Indiana. The state runner-up 9-year-olds and the state runner-up 11-year-olds are also playing in Ohio Valley Regionals. The 9-year-olds, I believe, are in Kentucky, and the 11-year-olds, which play the 50-70 dimensions, are down in Galesburg, in, uh, Illinois. So all those teams will start pool play on Thursday. And again, just like the Janesville tournament, all four of those teams are guaranteed four games. A busy wrap-up to the a busy baseball wrap up, summer. But it just tells you – baseball in this town right now is pretty good uh craig just won a state title so uh um it's good to see that because uh this has been a baseball town for a long time went through a little lull and it it looks like it's back and it's and it's thriving again uh some local golf this weekend as well the Mm -hmm. janesville men's city tournament friday saturday sunday next weekend week from this weekend Oh, was it next week? Yeah, last weekend of the month. Yep. Are you sure? I'm positive. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. <laughs> no, nope, it's actually this weekend. Because I know it is. Because they go to the state am and then they go to the city tournament straight away. Sam got seven whole seven uh, rounds in seven days so, for Matt. So Bain what's and going Sam on Van this Gelder. weekend? The men's city tournament. Yeah. Well, we better get down on the photo schedule because <laughs> I don't think it's on there. I thought it was the last weekend of the month, the same as the fair. Well, well, because the schedule's all messed up. It's like a late July. Hmm. I think you're wrong, but that's okay. I'll check it right now. Check it right now. July 24th, I'm seeing. That looks like this week. For the Men's City Tournament. Yeah. 2015 Men's City Championship. Yeah. At Riverside. Riverside and then Glen Aaron and then Country Club on Sunday. Okay. Well, he, he's that's why he's the boss, <laughs> I mean, uh, people. I mean, uh, I was supposed to be playing it if I knew well, how to play golf. Well, because the only reason I ask is because the photographer came up to me and said, when are the – we're gonna butt heads with the with the Rock County Fair, and I said, "Well, the fair takes precedence over the city golf tournament." Well, now we won't have to worry about that. Now we don't got to worry about it. Okay, well then we do have to worry about photo schedule though, because it's not on there. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that'll be interesting, and I think if That's, you look at it, it's a new excuse me, it's a new format this year with it is. Uh, kind of a play in round instead of breaking it down to the flights. The flights beforehand, mm-hmm. they wait until the players get some rounds under their belt. But it'll be interesting. It's uh, a lot of times come down to Matt uh, Matt Bame and Sam Van Gelder, yep. both of them playing in the state am this week, and we're shooting this before the cut was made. There, we'll see. But if they make it or made it, that always means seven rounds seven in seven rounds. days. And, and so. to be honest with you, I would expect those two. I would be surprised if another name got into the mix other than those two. Last year was John Milner, the high schooler, yep. who kind of pushed them the first two days, yep. and then they kind of made it a two man battle yep. on the last day, but. Always kind of fun just to see the local players and see how they do three courses in three days. And, and it'll be interesting to get the feedback on the new format because I think they were, you know, um, just looking for something to uh, – it kind of hopefully takes away from the sandbagging portion of it where somebody that, you know, posts some scores and goes out and wins B flight when they probably should have been an A flight. And, and you know, there's, there's certainly golfers out there that are doing that. And uh, hopefully by going to this new format they can avoid that. It'll be a true test, let's put it that That's way. That's right. And we're coming off the end of the British here. We talked about it in the intro a little bit, but uh, kind of, I mean, it was for a minute there you thought Spieth was going to really pull a 3 or 4 and that was going to make whistling straights oh, at the PGA just in, incredible. But crazy. Not quite, but, I mean, quite the run that your boy put together there. Well, and, you know, and you're like, I mean, you, you're you an avid golfer, and I'm, I like the sport and I like to watch it, but, again, I just, that doesn't look like fun. That <laughs> playing in the wind and the rain. Playing in the wind and the rain, and it just it never looks. Those guys never look comfortable. You know when you're when you're putting gloves on, walking to your next shot, and you know the rain's coming down sideways, and your ball's on the green and it's moving, and it's just the conditions are always deplorable, and it never looks like anyone's having fun. And and obviously Zach Johnson had a great time, but. It it just to me is it's a different kind of golf and uh, which is fine which not, is fine hey not every day you show up here no. to your job is the no, most I fun agree. day in the world and right it's the most the claret jug is the most coveted trophy they said uh, on the tour and uh, Zach Johnson's taking his second major trophy home with him and uh, he could probably care less it's just uh, I don't know he's just he's like the mo- least 
like drama guy yeah. <laughs> that you could yes. possibly imagine. Yeah. Just this country boy from I, Iowa. I did get a kick out of his caddy doing the duck walk on well. 18 after he made the birdie. That was that was entertaining. <laughs> but And again, another great story was a kid from Mequon. Um, Jordan Nebrugge, yeah. You, you know, kid, I think I got a chance to interview him with the Ray Fisher. And, uh, you know, 11 under, the lowest score ever posted by an amateur at the Open. And, uh, you know, had it going there for a while where you weren't sure if he wasn't going to be in the mix of the of the leaders. And, and well, and everybody talked about the other guy, Dunn. And he, he was, was in the lead going into the last. And then he so was, obviously he was a storyline, but I mean. And then he was done after about the sixth <laughs> hole on, on Dunn Monday. Was done. Dunn was done because he he imploded. But uh, entertaining, like I said, it, it's fun for, you know, I got an off day on Monday. I'm able to watch it. And I, I pretty much got up early and, and watched it from uh, start to finish. And when Jordan four putted uh, on the par three in the front nine, I thought, oh, man. But then he rattled off and got some birdies and got back and then just uh, just hit a bad shot on 17 and and that's they said that's the toughest par four in the, t- toughest par four toughest, in the world toughest hole every year every any time that anytime Andrews is played part of the schedule and uh, it, it sure reared its head even in the playoff all three of those guys bogeyed it and uh, it, you know which means for me it'd probably be like a 10 for me or a double snowman or something like that well you got to hit like over buildings yeah You'd over buildings and through the river and over to grandmother's house and you know it's again it, it just that course i don't know it just never looks like it's a lot of fun just the fans don't look comfortable the players aren't comfortable i saw zach johnson in between shots putting mittens on and i'm just like that's not golf that's not fun but you know, it's the British Open, and it was it sure was entertaining. You think the PGA? I mean, to me, the local fans they lose a little bit in the fact that there's not a Grand Slam, but I think they also gain a little bit in the fact that if you're the everyday fan, that ticket's not going to be so crazy if you don't have a ticket yet. You don't have a ticket, yeah. Uh, I mean, those tickets were going to be nuts if he was in the mix for a Grand Slam. I think, right? And at least these maybe will keep the prices down a little bit. And I still think they'll come out in mass to 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 just support it because uh, well, even even if he were to win three or four, and yeah. he won every one on American soil. Right. I think would be pretty special. So yeah, and and let's face it, you got to go back what sixty some years when Van Hogan did it. So it's obviously it is so difficult to win a Slam in golf, and uh, it would have been neat to see because, like I say, Jordan's just a good guy. I mean, he was so. When they interviewed him at the end yesterday, you know, he could have made up a lot of excuses. He just said, hey, I kind of enjoyed the ride. He said, I just, uh, you know, I missed that putt at 17, and I didn't hit a very good tee shot on 18. And he didn't try to sugarcoat it. He didn't make any excuses. He just said, I just came up short. We'll see what he can do. The last yep. stop's in Wisconsin. Yep, it so is. We'll break that down a little more as it gets closer. Uh, that's about all we got for today. Let us know what you think of the show by uh, leaving us a review on YouTube or iTunes or at GazetteExtra.com. Follow us on Twitter or email us at sports at GazetteExtra.com. And we will be back here in a week or two to really, uh, we're getting close to high school football we are. season. August 4th, two weeks from today, practice starts. Maybe that'll be about the time we uh, figure out when the men's show, city tournament so, is. Well, when you figure that out. Okay. <laughs> when you figure it out, you let us know All about right. that. Uh, until then. Take care. We'll see you at GazetteExtra.com. Take care, everybody.